Today we will be talking about Muhammad bin Tughlaq, a major ruler in the Tughlaq dynasty. Born Ulugh Khan, he received a remarkable education for the times he lived in. He possessed knowledge of the Quran or the Muslim holy book, Muslim law, astronomy, and medicine. In 1321, his father, remember that guy, who he respected greatly, sent him for war against the city of Warangal in South India. After initial rebuttals, he succeeded in bringing the rebellious Hindu Rajas under control. As mentioned in the previous video, he was a great son and had his father murdered. I might have lied about the respect part. His father, Gihasuddin Tughlaq, was returning from a battle in Bengal when on the pretext of displaying fake respect, Uluk Khan built a rest house for his father near present-day Meerut. However, it was a weak structure designed for instant demolition. During a celebration, elephants ran over it, causing the tent to crumble and Gyasuddin, who was within, to die. Exactly what our dear friend Ulu Khan had wanted. Within three days after the death of his father, he took over the throne with the title Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Despite being so well educated, he came to be known as the Bloody King because of his reign of bloody wars, crazy ideas and insane methods of torture. Bloody purely because of the blood he had shed. We're not swearing at him. He had spent a lot of money in trying to keep the support of the Muslim holy men. He thought that the support of Nizamuddin Aulia, remember him? And after Cherag Delvi, who was Sufi saints, would win him widespread support. However, he failed to get their support due to his cruel, crazy ways. His treasury was now depleted and he wasn't willing to stay in the city of Tughlaqabad, which his father Gyasuddin had built. And so, he started joining the walls of Meroli, which is where Qutub Minar is today, and Siri, near present-day Hoskas, to create the fourth city of Delhi, which was called Jahapana. In some strange change of thought though, he decided to shift his capital in 1327 from Delhi to the geographical center of his empire in Diogiri, now Dalatabad in Maharashtra, so that he could capture southern India. He forced migration of the people of Delhi to the Ogir, a 40-day journey. Imagine the government today asking to move cities, not because you want to, but because you have to. Almost one-third of the population perished in the mass migration. But Dalatabad was so ill-fated, the water there ran out within 3-4 years, and so the city population was again asked to move back to Delhi, which had the river Yamuna. He then decided to change the coin system. At that time, only gold coins were used as currency. Can you imagine buying packets of chips with gold now? His then big idea was the introduction of coins of other metals like copper and brass, like we do it now, made at special mints he set up across the empire, which was pretty innovative for those times. However, people realized these new coins could easily be forged, and so the market was flooded with fake coins and the prices of products began to rise. Economics, I know, I'm sorry. The Sultan then asked the people to give back all metal coins in return for which they received silver and gold coins. Somewhat like getting gold jewelry in exchange for today's one rupee coin. Completely insane. Thus, the whole treasury was emptied and this scheme of the Sultan also failed miserably. In order to overcome financial difficulties, Muhammad bin Tughlaq increased taxes on the farmers of Doab, a place between the Ganga and the Yamuna. At the time, severe famine had broken out there and these taxes just made everything a whole lot worse. It resulted in serious peasant revolts, and when the emperor took harsh measures to capture and punish them, they took to highway robbery. Another failure in his cap. Now there was a reason he came to be known as the Bloody King. He punished not only rebels and thieves with cruel deaths, but also Muslim scholars and holy men who criticized him. Not a week passed without streams of blood running before the entrance of his palace. This included cutting people in half, skinning them alive, or having prisoners tossed about by elephants which had swords attached to their tusks. People were laid flat on their backs and on their chests was placed a red-hot iron plate which was pulled off after a moment and took with it the flesh off their chests. After that, urine and cinders were poured onto their wounds. <sighs> Muhammad bin Tughlaq lost much of his empire during the later years of his reign. He is said to have faced 22 rebellions in his 26 years of reign. Great guy. The empire had shrunk and his cousin Firoz Shah Tughlaq inherited almost half of the empire.